Good morning. I'm grateful for the opportunity to share God's word with you today. Where is your refuge? Or another way of asking the question maybe to ask is, where is your safe haven? You may, of course, have more than one safe haven. For me, one safe haven is my home. A simple cup of tea, slippers on, chatting to Pat, maybe watching some TV or just simply chewing the fat. I know for a fact that Pat, as a young teenager, used to love escaping by herself to a spot on the clifftop of her seaside home. She enjoyed the peace and the tranquility and the opportunity to read or reflect in her chosen safe haven. Maybe your safe haven is when you are in the company of that particular special person to you. We human beings desire security and we don't often think of our mortality. Our thought process is something like, if I'm okay today, I'll probably be okay tomorrow. Frankly, it becomes very disturbing and uncomfortable when that sense of certainty and security is challenged or shaken. I don't know who from Clyde Bank chose Psalm 46 as a scripture for today, but surely given our current circumstance, there could hardly be a more appropriate scripture. If you believe that God is ever present and with us always, then this psalm is a live and vital gift. It is in fact God's word for today, for our day, our present circumstances, our predicament. In fact, it's a gift for every day. As one commentator has said in reference to another well-known encounter that Jesus had with his disciples, in a world gripped by COVID-19 fever, Here is a pillow on which your soul can rest safely amidst the storm. Psalm 46 is one of the many gift songs that God has provided for us. This psalm is surely part of the ongoing living package of loving care mentioned in Matthew 28, 20, when we read, And surely I am with you always to the end of the world. Whatever is thrown at us, including COVID, we do not face it alone. God is with us. God is with you. As one commentator has reminded us, the closer the danger, the nearer the shepherd. Read Psalm 46. Allow the psalm to speak to you believing that God is using his word to speak powerfully into your situation. And importantly, allow the psalm to speak through you today. This morning, I'm looking at just three verses. The context is a time of immense chaos. All the constants of life are being challenged The very landscapes that exist before birth and which were expected never to change are being destroyed. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. For some years, as a DHQ and Corps officer, then as the International Emergency Services Coordinator, based at IHQ headquarters, responding to disaster was a major part of my life. Alongside other charities and agencies, we organised response to natural disasters such as the 
Asian tsunami, the northern Pakistan earthquake, tornadoes in the Philippines, and sometimes man-made disasters such as war in Albania and the Balkans, Iraq, eternal strife in northern Uganda, and the Syrian refugee crisis in Jordan. At the end of my IHQ appointment, the Ebola crisis had just commenced. Even with my experience of disaster, given our modern medicines, our technologies, our grasp and understanding of science, I never envisaged the situation such as we face today in 2020. But God is our refuge and strength. God is an ever-present help in trouble. Since the 1870s, Clyde Bank has been synonymous with boat building and huge ocean-going vessels. Famous ships like Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth, QE2, as well as the warship HMS Hood, all were built here. There is much building of homes and facilities for the workers required for this industry. Just a few miles down the road from Clyde Bank is Bowling Harbour, which is the western gateway for the River Clyde to the Forth and Clyde Canal. There's something mesmerising about little boats bobbing up and down within the safety of the harbour. The large vessels built at Clyde Bank could be admired in the dry docks for their sheer size and workmanship. But that was only the first chapter of their working lives. Today's small craft at Bowling look very pretty in the harbour. But boats are meant to leave the safety of the harbour and the dry dock and head out for the waterways of the UK or indeed the vast oceans beyond the harbour walls. The reality is that most of us are not called to remain in the safe haven. Yes, I can enjoy my relaxed evening in my slippers, but I know soon that work will beckon. And Pat could relish her times of tranquility on the cliff pathway, but knew that in time, as dusk settled, she would have to pack away her books and move on. God is our refuge, our sanctuary. But that doesn't equate to a permanent retreat from the world, nor does knowing God somehow immunise us from the world. In 1 Peter 2 verse 5, far from being in retreat, we Christians are called to be living stones, firm, steady, strong, true, resilient, our lives built upon Jesus, the living stone. I've told this story before, but I will tell it now, and probably many more times because of the impact that it made on me. It was in Jordan, helping the Syrian refugees who were coming across the border, that I heard in a new and fresh way the phrase living stones. It was used with a new significance and with a deeper meaning. The Salvation Army had partnered with a very small, very brave local Christian charity. Not really easy to be a Christian in that part of the world. As I left for the airport and the safety and security of the UK, the doctor who was the leader of this small charity said words I will not easily forget. Please pray for us, Major Ray. Do not forget us, the living stones. And as I sat in the plane heading for the UK, I realised that being a living stone was the doctor's calling. But was it also my calling? What does a person who is a living stone look like? I think they are a person of prayer. They are a person of care and concern for others. 
they are a person willing to spend quality Christian time with others. They are a person of spiritual encouragement. They are a people of grace. Living stones are people who, despite everything, know that God is for us. That is, wisdom, power, holiness, justice, goodness and truth is for us. They know that God in his fullness is engaged on our side for our benefit. In this regard, God is the one to whom we can run when we're in danger. God is the one who's strong when we are weak. God is for us because he is near, ever present when we need help. Literally, a help in tight places. Very findable. This does not mean that for living stones, the storm will magically disappear. My doctor friend in Jordan certainly understood the enormity of his task. Spurgeon, writing on these verses, said, If it were well, if all of us could say, Seller under tempestuous trials, but alas, too often we speak in our haste, lay our trembling hands bewildered among the strings, strike the lyre with a rude crash, and mar the melody of our life song. But if God is real, a real refuge, strength and help to his people, then there is no logical reason to fear, even in the biggest crisis, though the earth be removed. It means that God is with us. We can take comfort in being in God's presence, trusting in the promise of eternal life. It means that the creator of the universe cares about our daily struggles and shares in them with us. It means that the one who died in your place for your sins will never abandon you. God with us, Emmanuel. As the writer of Psalm 46 looked for God for help in what were clearly difficult times, he could say from the experience of his heart that God himself was a place of refuge, just as secure as the cities of refuge which protected fugitives in Israel. Although both Isaiah 42 verse 3 and Matthew 12 20 describe us humans as bruised reeds, and weak by nature, the psalmist knew, as we can know, that God himself is strength for his people, both being strong for them and in them. The psalmist spoke of God as a present help. As one commentator puts it, the secret of such confidence is the consciousness of the nearness of God. So the psalmist considered the most frightening, humbling, natural phenomenon imaginable. Then he made the reasoned estimation that God was greater than them all. And being frozen in fear before these things in some way robs God of his honour. That is impressive faith. Like all promises, this one can be misunderstood because God's presence can be taken for granted. Even in the Old Testament, the prophets denounced such thinking, especially Jeremiah. Jeremiah 7 verse 4 insisted that people could not simply chant the mantra, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, and think nothing bad could happen to them. No aspect of biblical religion can ever be used as a talisman or good luck charm. God's presence and God's security is found amongst those who repent, change their ways and do justice. And then after finding our refuge in the presence of God, we roll up our sleeves and help others to find God and help others in need because that's what we do. That's what God calls us to do. So friends, read again the psalm, Psalm 46, and allow God both to speak to you and through you to others.
Thank you. Bless you. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Let's just take a moment to pray together. Just as the writer of the psalm looked to God for her help in difficult times, so Heavenly Father, we come before you today in a time of great need, a time of fear, a time that challenges our faith and perhaps causes us to question those things we hold most dear. Sometimes, Lord, it seems the clouds are gathering and the storm is coming and we just don't feel safe. We don't feel at peace. We fear what might yet come. Lord, in these times, Help us to remember you are the God who is with us. You are the God who is ever present. You are our strength. You are our hope. You are our refuge. You are our comfort. You are our God. And we place our trust in you. Lord, we see people around us who are desperate for that same sense of assurance and hope and security. I pray that you would just help those of us who believe to be ready to share our faith, not just in word, but in practical ways too, as we come alongside our neighbour and work together to meet the needs of others. Thank you for all that is being done in your name in these days. Thank you for the many acts of kindness we see around us. Thank you for those glimpses of your love that bring light into dark places. You are our refuge and strength an ever-present help in trouble. We are in your hands and we trust you for today and for the future. Thank you, Lord, for being with us and in us. Amen. God bless you. <laughs>